21 years old, but this sucker is still a screamer, baby. As we say, all the gear all the time, baby. Why, Why have I been forsaken? Off when you're working on this motorcycle is uh go up unprepared. Oh. What's up, Rudo? Shade Tree Surgeon here with the CBX. Gotta do a little maintenance to it today before we take it out again, and of course, to get it ready for whoever the new owner is gonna be. And first thing we're gonna do is. I we were gonna go for a ride. Well, I mean, <laughs> motorcycles still need maintenance. So wonderful Miss Chloe Cox over here, when she asks like that, going for a ride seems like a way better idea than working on the motorcycle. But I'll tell you this we have to work on it. We gotta do it. You're right, you're right. I think I could fix it. I'm not leaving you alone in here with that motorcycle again. I saw what happened last time. There was a security camera up there, by the way. <laughs> but seriously, let's fix the motorcycle. All right, Chloe. The first thing you're gonna wanna take off when you're working on this motorcycle is, uh, <laughs> that works. I really couldn't show you guys a whole lot of the oil change that Chloe did, but the oil is most definitely changed and we're most definitely riding the CBX now. <laughs> As we say, all the gear all the time, baby. All right, Chloe, now's the real test. Did you fix the bike properly or not? We just gotta take both of us down the road, okay? Well, if something goes awry, it's gonna go very awry. I've got faith in you, well, of course. <laughs> Right there yeah, listen up. I might have been right there, but I was also a million miles away. Mm, right up. Why wouldn't it? It's had the lovely Miss Chloe Cox with her fingers all up inside its private parts. And now she gets to reap the benefits. I don't know if riding with me is always a benefit, but, uh, you know, we'll go ahead and call it one. Hmm, a gentleman's weapon, but I ain't no gentleman. Ask any one of my ex-girlfriends. They'll definitely agree with that statement. We had Dr. Girlfriend wash it. Chloe, fix it. What's next, baby? Well, what's next is somebody's gonna win it. If you guys didn't know, this 19 82 CBX 1000 last year production. They only made it for four years inline six cylinder back when Honda used to be cool. We are giving this motorcycle away to somebody and for $25, this piece of history could be yours. Always fun jumping on this onto the CBX after my gold one with Miss Chloe back there. Cause I'll tell you this right now, the Bangkok bagger might be the Mormon glide. It leaves enough room for Jesus, but the CBX, it don't even leave enough room for any imagination. Oh, my time is growing short with the CBX, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm definitely gonna miss this motorcycle. This thing is, it's not one of a kind. They made it for four years. It's not one of a kind, but when it comes to the motorcycles that I've ever thrown a leg over, it might as well be one of a kind. I don't think I'll probably ever get access to another CBX as long as I live. So thankful to have the time I did with this one, and then it'll be time to send it on to one lucky winner. Now, why are we giving away a CBX Honda's legendary named weapon? You might ask. Well, there are two reasons that we're giving away this CBX. The first reason is Forgotten Angel. Something a lot of you guys already know about. Forgotten Angels is an absolutely amazing institution that does everything from build tiny homes to rebuild bank accounts to get them in counseling to young men and women who have aged out of the foster care system. Young men and women who have been abused mentally, physically, and in every way you can think of by their birth parents. They were failed by their birth parents at a very young age. Then they were put into a state home in these places. Some of them are amazing and some of them are more horrendous than the places they left. A lot of these places are run by unsafe savory individuals who will literally stick up to four kids in a single room, receive about $1,000 per child. They don't have to provide food, a TV, as long as there's air conditioning and a roof over their heads, it's all they have to provide. No supervision, no enrichment, no nothing. So you take a 12, 13 year old kid who's just gotten out of a situation where they're possibly being sexually abused, physically abused, mentally abused by their birth parents, and you stick them alone in a room with three other kids and nobody even pays attention to them. They just grab their paycheck and say see you later until they turn 18 and then they put all their belongings if they even have any into a garbage 
plastic bag and they literally throw them out on the streets on their 18th birthday. A lot of them don't have IDs, they have no driver's license, they have no job, they have no future, no prospects. They're on a one-way ticket to a tent city in drug addiction. Well, that's where Forgotten Angels steps in. David always says, these kids didn't choose this. These kids did not ask for this. They've done nothing wrong. They deserve a first chance because they never got a first chance. They deserve at least a chance to fail. And that's what Forgotten Angels does. They give them their first chance because society wasn't going to give them any chance at all. And let me tell you, dude, the social workers and the government and everyone else who's supposed to be looking out, most of those people are just as happy to let them fall through the cracks. To every $25 raffle ticket you buy, 100% of that goes to Forgotten Angels. And what does 25 bucks do? Well, it gets you a shot at the CVX 1000 first off, but 25 bucks does a lot more than you might think. There's so many kids who have come there, they've come there and they've needed a tank of gas, or they've needed a hotel room to stay in the night, or they've needed a hot meal. 25 bucks, it can do a lot more than you think it can. This place might look familiar. This is where David always takes people who come to the Forgotten Angels camp out on the leftover ride to watch the sunset. And you guys who've been to the camp out, you guys who've ridden with me and David, spent time with us there, seen Forgotten Angels, met Cindy, seen what they do, seen the people they help, met the young men at the property. You guys know what we're all about. Everyone else, you're taking me in my word, but we've done a lot of good in this world together. Shade Tree Army, Brap Star, all you guys out there watching these YouTube videos, we've done some amazing things. So most of y'all have just taken me at my word. Word. And I hope that you don't have to for much longer because the mission now is to expand Forgotten Angels to every state. The amount of heartbreak and people who have been hurt just in our little corner of Florida is staggering. The number of people who need help across the country is, uh, I just, I can't even know what the number is. I'm sure it's overwhelming, but hey man, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time, baby. And listen up, old Shade Tree Surgeon, he's equal opportunity, all right? I like him in all shapes, sizes, and colors. And uh, I'd be a liar if I said I hadn't eaten a few elephants in my day. <laughs> Where was I? Anyway, you know, back to doing good. That 25 bucks, that could win you this bike. But you know that 25 bucks is going to do good things. Got a few days left to grab a raffle ticket. And uh, of course, now let me tell you about the second reason we have a 1982 CBX to give away for Forgotten Angels. And that is because of a man named Matt White who owns a company named Ampere EV. And he donated this motorcycle. This motorcycle was his pride and joy. Joy. Motorcycle he's wanted since he was a little kid. Well, I've known Matt for a while. You'll remember him from the VMAX video I did forever ago. And Matt had this bike and he was going to sell it. And when I told him about Forgotten Angels, he said, you know what, man? I'm just going to donate the whole thing. I'm going to donate the motorcycle to Forgotten Angels. You raffle it off, raise as much money as you can. So not even any money went to purchase the motorcycle that we're raffling off. So when I say 100% of all of this, 100% of it is going to Forgotten Angels. Leave a huge thanks for Matt White down in the comments. Go check out AmpereEV.com. I'll have a link to that down below. Even if electric vehicles aren't your thing, hey, maybe you know somebody who does. I'd like to reward Matt for being an amazing human being and donating his dream bike, the bike that he had on his wall to Forgotten Angels to do an amazing thing and become somebody else's dream bike. I know a lot of the people who have bought tickets, this is your dream bike. Well, yeah, <laughs> dreams come true sometimes, all right? One way or another, someone's riding this bike home. And hey, ride it home, man. I would love that. We'll fly you down here. Every motorcycle, if you so choose, comes with a one-way ticket to Tampa. You can come drink, party, go fishing, and ride motorcycles with us for a weekend. Come on vacation, leave on probation. Make your escape from the Wang on your CBX back home. We'll send you packing with a hangover and enough money for gas to get you home. There's a lot of bikes we've given away that people have rode home halfway across the country that were pretty sketchy, but they still made it. This motorcycle, I'd ride across country tomorrow without a thought in the world. I always hope whoever wins these bikes, I always hope they take me up on that plane ticket offer. It is real. There are literally at this point dozens of people, or at least over a dozen, who have won motorcycles and chosen to fly to Tampa and ride them home. And I always think that's so freaking cool, man. And if you win the bike and you can't do that, don't sweat it, man. There'll be other opportunities for adventure, but it's always a little cooler when you do. That link to the raffle is going to be right here on the screen and a clickable link down below. Be a bad person doing good things. And speaking of a bad person, I got an awful pretty girl on the back of this motorcycle. Let's go fire a couple beers into that girl back there and uh, see what we can talk her into. One years old, but this sucker is still a screamer, baby. Oh, 
hail the return of ODB. Well, it's not really a return when you never went away, is it? Out of every motorcycle I've built, uh, far and above, I'll say that the old dual Sportster is probably the most successful. Now, when I say successful, I don't mean successful as in completed. I've completed plenty of other stuff on the channel. I mean successful as in I've put more miles on this build than literally anything else I've ever built in my life. And while not every single one of those miles has been worry-free, trouble-free, or drama-free, most of them have. And the whole, well, second reason, the first reason was to do the Trans-American Trail, which I still have not done, which will probably get pointed out in the comments. I'm sorry, guys, it's hard to take a month off to ride motorcycles. I wish I could. And I know it seems like riding motorcycles is my job, but it isn't, I promise you. So the second reason this bike was built was to do Sportster Summer, a much shorter BDR trip with uh, the boys from Gigastat Cycles, Chicken Fried Choppers, all my buddies out there. Adam Sandoval went on the first one. That one's coming up again. So even though I ride this thing all the time off camera, let's knock the dust off of it for you guys. Super Trap sounds good, baby. Oh yeah. The metamorphosis that this Sportster has been through since my ownership of it has been extreme. It started out as a 2001 883 low. 7,000 kind, gentle miles by a female rider, just really well taken care of. And then I got my dirty dick beaters all over it. This motorcycle probably thought it had lived a nice, easy life, no sin going straight to heaven. And then it fell into my clutches and I dragged it straight to hell. The 883 low has turned into a 1250cc SNS hooligan, 7 inches of suspension travel up front, race tech 15 inch shocks in the back, storage by Harbor Freight and my terrible welding skills. Like my grandpa always said, if you can't tie a knot, tie a lot. I take the same approach to welding. All of this stuff combined does not seem like it would make a motorcycle that was uh, fun to ride or like anything nice at all, but believe it or not, this thing actually performs pretty well off-road. The rear shocks in the front are valved for both my weight, the motorcycle's weight, and the type of riding I'm going to do with enough preload adjustment to account for luggage too, like any good ADV bike should have. And while this certainly ain't no dirt bike, and my 300 pound ass certainly ain't no rusty butcher taking a sports star off a crazy jump, it freaking gets the job done, man. This thing is better off-road than a lot of adventure bikes, I'll tell you that right now. And maybe it's just for me because I actually have the suspension valve for my weight which I will tell you having the suspension set up for your weight is probably the best thing you can do for any motorcycle if you want to take it off road or even if you're just on road, man, getting the suspension set up for you personally, your riding style, your weight, what kind of luggage you're going to carry if you're going to have a passenger. That is the most important thing you can ever do to a motorcycle in my opinion anyway. And it becomes a little more important when you're uh, American sized like I am, trust me. I'm looking forward to the Happy Valley Rally, man. I'm looking forward to seeing Tim from Gigasat, Chicken Fried Choppers, all the boys out there, Brandon and a lot of the new guys who I haven't met yet. And by the way, it's an open invitation. If you want to build an Ironhead or an Evolution Sportster and come out to the Happy Valley Rally and ride off-road for a few days on the BDR loop, well, come on out, man. But let me tell you, these boys haul ass. So you don't really want to show up unprepared. Oh, like that. Oh. <laughs> well then. Well, better than going head first into that. Oh. All right. Oh, where was I? Don't show up unprepared. <laughs> one of these days, uh, I'll take my own advice. It's not going to be today, but one of these days. All right, where was I? Yeah, show up prepared. There's definitely wrecks every year that they have it, and there's always a few broken bones, a few broken bikes. Uh, my man Brandon sent his bike right off the side of a cliff, luckily uninjured, and the bike even made it out of the woods. So that really wasn't a bad one. But every year they've had it, there has been broken bones. So I'm just I'm just warning you guys, if you're gonna come up to the Happy Valley Rally and you're gonna build an off-road Sportster or you're just gonna take a street Sportster and throw some knobbies on it, which people have done, be prepared, ride your own 
ride, if someone's riding fast, don't try to keep up with them if it's outside of your comfort level and get a bunch of people together out in the woods and uh, everyone starts showing their ass and hauling ass and sending it hard. And it gets real easy to, uh, to get into that mindset, that group think, that feeding frenzy of a bunch of bikers trying to show off. I am not immune from that, trust me. Just try to keep your head on your shoulders and uh, of course, send it, you know, have fun. Get a little reckless, life ain't no fun unless you get a little reckless after all, but try to make it home with all your bones intact. Although here in the third year, I can't imagine it'll be any different. So hopefully whatever broken bones there are this year, uh, it's nothing too terribly important. so damn beautiful here in Florida. It's so gorgeous and so perfect that it's giving me anxiety. Don't know what it is, but every day that goes by where it's perfect, I just feel like I need to take action. I need to move. I'm just, I'm wasting time. I'm working too much. I'm not riding enough. I mean, I always feel like I'm working too much and not riding enough. And I know everyone out there feels the same way. But when it's like this, we got a California sky. It's 79 degrees outside. I'm just like freaking out going, oh my God, I can't believe I have to do a single lick of work instead of ride my motorcycle. I want to be on an adventure. I feel a sense of urgency. I have got itchy, itchy feet. This happens to me every year, so sometimes I wonder if it's this weird sense of urgency that's put on me by some vestigial caveman programming deep in the dark, dank recesses of my brain. Something left over and covered with cobwebs way back there that is just kicking me in the ass and filling me with this urge to move, to migrate, to go somewhere because, hey, the heat is coming to Florida. You need to go forth and propagate your seed across the country. Listen, baby, I know they say shade tree surgeon's a dog, and uh, I'm a good dog, but I'm still a dog, all right? You hear? And I, I didn't make myself this way. You can't blame me. Blame God. That's what I say. Call it a blessing, call it a curse, but I've never met anybody of the female persuasion that I couldn't find something I loved about them. Far be it for me to deny my programming, and something deep inside my programming is urging me forth. I know I'm preaching to the choir right now. I know everyone out there in Brap Star and Shade Tree Army, I know you guys got that wanderlust in you, but let me tell you this, if you got a little bit of wanderlust in you, that means you got that dog in you too, baby. You're just a better dog than I am. If you're sitting out there with itchy feet right now wanting to hit the road and be free, you might be a good boy who comes home to your old lady every night and says all the right things and would never put one single toe out of line. You toe the mark, you walk the line, but don't deny your nature. You're still a dog. Me? I never could toe the mark and I never could walk the line. I ain't about to start trying now. All this talk about being a dog and not towing the mark, not walking the line, and needing to let my wanderlust free to prance across the nation like a beautiful princess. I figure I ought to do something about it, okay? Even if I can't leave the state right now because I'm just so piled up with work, I can at least do something here. And while part of that anxiety is my caveman brain telling me to run north for the summer, another part of that anxiety is right in my uh, modern man's brain saying, when you got blue skies and 79 degree days and 50 degree nights, it's time to go camping in your home state of Florida. It don't get no better than this. We got another couple months of this and uh, we're straight into summer, baby. So you want to go moto camping. Man and machine becoming one with nature. You feel the call of the wild. Well, I'll tell you this. Don't hit that dusty old trail unless you're prepared. There's a few essential items and skills you'll need to have before you go to do battle with that beautiful big booty hoe, Mother Nature. The right motorcycle to go moto camping on is of paramount importance. The less practical, the better. High mount exhaust to burn your pants, knobby tires to navigate those gravel parking lots, a spare fuel can that's always empty, and a cheap set of Chinese LED lights will be sure to make you the darling of all the chubby Jeep girls at your local REI. 
There are three commandments that a great moto camping tent must follow. Number one, be insanely overpriced. Number two, be bulky and overweight. And number three, look great in Instagram pictures. The Wingman of the Road hits all of those, plus locks in the Grand Slam with its bonus feature of being wildly uncomfortable to sleep in. And don't forget the most important part, the camera gear. After all, what's the point of getting away from people and enjoying the solitude of nature if you can't show thousands of people at least 16 different angles of you enjoying? the solitude of nature. Congratulations, my fellow wanderer. You're ready to crack open an inexplicably flavored craft beer from your favorite nano brewery, kick back, and film yourself pretending to relax in high definition. You're already counting the Instagram likes in your head. Each comment from a stranger on the internet, a tiny little virtual hug that you never got from your dad. When that existential ice pick of reality stabs your beautiful daydream in its tiny little heart. Fuck! How can you make strangers jealous of your camping trip if you don't know how to cook? The horror of not having an Instagrammable meal washes over you like an icy tsunami. Desperation gnaws at your soft white underbelly as you realize not even your useless boutique butcher's cleaver you bought instead of an actual knife can give your pathetic plebeian meal any character. Desperation turns to anger as you cry out to the heavens. You rage and seethe, boiling alive in vitriol as you stand alone at the kingdom gates of an oblivious, uncaring god. Pleading falls on deaf ears like rain in the desert. Threats fall like wheat before a farmer's scythe, and hope falls like a broken toy cast aside by a capricious child. Are my, Are my sins, sins so great? So great? Why, Why have I been, have I been forsaken? forsaken? Cruel, Cruel hunger, hunger consumes. consumes. But hark! Hello, beautiful people! A distant beacon flashes. A whispered promise dances through the air. Get out and do the thing. And its name is Salvation. So my good friend Amanda Zitto, aka As the Magpie Flies here on YouTube, has sweet, sweet salvation for all you moto campers out there who either lack cooking skills or are just looking for inspiration for some camp meals. Her new cookbook is now available for pre-order on Indiegogo, and I was lucky enough that Amanda gave me early access to check it out. I cook all the time, and I'm more than mildly proficient at cooking, I'd say, but even if I wasn't, this camp cookbook's instructions are not only easy enough for anyone to follow, but also also give you the crucial tips and tricks to make all this possible from the back of a motorcycle on the road. No doubt, it's full of amazing recipes, but it's packed even more so with the knowledge on how to make the most out of limited resources and space imposed by motorcycle travel. I chose to make the nachi and mushroom skillet because it's something I'd never think to make myself on a camping trip, which is part of the fun of cookbooks. I've never pan fried nachi before and I was blown away by how a simple low ingredient recipe brought out so many flavors. I genuinely just meant to make this for the video, but it was so freaking good, I ended up eating the whole thing. Delicious. Five out of five Ichiban Moto stickers. Great job, Amanda. You killed it on this one. I know I was gushing to the point where that probably seemed like paid advertisement, but I promise you it was not. I'm just more than happy to support my friend Amanda and her cookbook that she's coming out with. The philosophy behind getting a cookbook isn't necessarily that like you don't know how to cook at all and you need these step-by-step -step recipe guides to show you what to do. Though, if you're in that boat, it will work for you. For me, the philosophy behind behind getting a cookbook is just pushing me outside of my normal boundaries when it comes to what I would cook. When I go out and I camp, I end up usually cooking something along the same line. When I use something like Amanda's cookbook, I can look at a recipe and it makes me do something I would normally never do. On top of that, I don't care how good you are or aren't at cooking. Cooking on the road, cooking with the limited stuff you have on a motorcycle, that is a completely different animal. And I will be honest with you, even though I've done it before, reading the book, I've learned how to do it a lot better now. This is not a paid 
advertisement. Amanda didn't even ask me to do this in a video for her. I just wanted to because I believe in supporting your friends. I believe in supporting those who support you. And Amanda Zitto rode cross country to come support the Forgotten Angels camp out because she believes in what they're doing down here. And that's something that I don't forget. And nothing gives me greater joy than seeing people I care about, seeing my friends reach a goal that they've been working towards for such a long time, do something like releasing their own cookbook. I just think that's so awesome. It's so cool. And you know, YouTube and motorcycles and all of you out there and everybody I've met through this stupid little website has just absolutely changed my life. And seeing them get to this point where they're releasing their own cookbook like Amanda is, it makes me very, very happy. And I'm happy to tell you guys about it. I'm happy that I've got a copy of it. And if this cookbook sounds like something you would use, I think that you should go support someone who's one of us. We never need a reason to ride our motorcycles and every reason to go camping, but I'll take any reason at all. And cooking a new recipe on the ground in the woods is a good enough reason as any, as uh, our girl says, to get out there and do the thing. That link's down below to show Amanda some love. I'm ordering a copy myself, even though I got a digital one early because I like to have the physical thing in my hands. Huge thanks to everyone out there who supports me, Shaylee C, Cami Bay, and the whole channel and you know, the whole Brap Star crew and uh, supports Forgotten Angels. Like I said, Amanda's a huge supporter of Forgotten Angels. You know, I just love making videos. I like making videos about motorcycles even more, but all you guys out there, you make it that much more fun and I will always appreciate that. Till next time, y'all. Keep it weird.